The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has for the first time included an outside expert in its inspections of one of the reactors. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials said the spent fuel storage pool in the number four reactor building is strong enough to resist earthquakes. The building was heavily damaged by a hydrogen explosion shortly after the March 11th disaster. TEPCO officials have been examining the storage pool every three months. The pool contains more than 1,500 fuel rods, the most at the plant. TEPCO officials said the latest inspection found that the pool had not tilted. They also said no major change was seen from measurements taken in November in the size of a bump in the western wall believed to have been caused by the blast. TEPCO officials said the latest inspection found that the pool had not tilted. They also said no major change was seen from measurements taken in November in the size of a bump in the western wall believed to have been caused by the blast. TEPCO allowed only one outside expert to join and did not release the name of the person. TEPCO allowed only one outside expert to join and did not release the name of the person. A section of roof at the Chernobyl nuclear complex has collapsed, prompting workers to evacuate. Ukrainian authorities say no one was injured, and they say there were no leaks of radiation. Officials say a 600 square meter section partially covered the turbine hall. Workers built it after the nuclear disaster in 1986. It gave way under the weight of heavy snow. Contractors are building a new protective structure to cover the number four reactor about 150 meters away. Foreman for a French construction company pulled out 80 workers as a precaution. Experts are concerned the concrete and metal structure built after the disaster is too old to contain the radiation inside the reactor. And the jury is still out on whether faults also pose a threat to the country's only two operating reactors. Geologists are preparing to dig some more at the Oi nuclear plant in central Japan in the hope of finding more conclusive evidence. Experts from the Nuclear Regulation Authority have twice since November examined trenches at the Oi plant. They remain divided over whether fissures found at the site are active faults or the result of landslides. The regulators asked the plant's operator to dig a new trench closer to the reactors. Engineers with the utility say they will inspect underground layers and report their findings by mid-July. The regulators say they're ready to order a shutdown of the plant if the presence of an active fault is confirmed. Experts with Japan's nuclear regulator have thrown another wrench into plans to put some power plants back online. Officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority have been looking at six complexes to see if they're stable. They found the one near the village of Higashidori may be sitting on active faults. NHK World's Susumu Kojima reports. The regulators dug into the ground. They found volcanic ash. They concluded that something underfoot was not stable. They found volcanic ash. They concluded that something underfoot was not stable. No shit. They say two faults could be active. The plant's operators have a different view. They say cracks around the fault were caused by groundwater. The experts say there's little evidence to support that view. We don't have a thorough explanation from the utility. We'll have to listen to what they have to say. The regulators say they may need to check the structure of the plant, and they may ask managers to review measures to protect the plant against earthquakes. Those findings could keep the plant offline for some time to come. Operators say they'll conduct another additional survey of their own. We would like to confirm through our geological research that there is no active fault under the plant. Experts say the Tsuruga plant on the Sea of Japan coast may also be sitting atop active faults and they are looking at four other nuclear facilities. 
48 of Japan's 50 commercial reactors are still offline. The people who run the plants are working hard to prove they are safe. But the latest findings suggest restarting some of them may prove to be more difficult than some thought. Susumu Kojima, NHK World, Tokyo. People in Japan's northernmost island say they don't want a nuclear plant near them. Hokkaido residents ask the government to stop building a facility. Electric Power Development Company, or J-Power, is constructing the plant in Oma on Japan's main island. The town is 23 kilometers by sea from Hakodate in Hokkaido. Work was stopped after the 2011 quake. It was resumed in October 2012. Heads of Hakodate and five of the cities submitted the request to the gov uh, central government. I don't think there's any need for the construction to go forward. The mayor also said people are worried about the safety of the plant because it's just across the water. City officials say they're considering filing a lawsuit to demand a stop to the construction. John Kerry is just settling into his job as U.S. Secretary of State, but he's wasting no time demonstrating his leadership. Scientists in North Korea staged another underground nuclear test earlier this week. Now Kerry is urging world leaders to mount a strong, credible response. North Korea's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile program are a threat now to the United States of America because of what they are pursuing, specifically, as well as to global security and peace. Kerry says he's also concerned about the nuclear program in Iran. He says Iranian and North Korean officials have cooperated on nuclear development. He says the international community must agree on what he called a swift, clear and strong response to the test. Kerry has reached out to his counterparts in a number of countries. He says he's pushing for new sanctions at the United Nations Security Council. In a related story, the National Intelligence Estimate on Iran this week concluded that Iran probably did once have a plan to develop a nuclear bomb but halted this in 2003 and had not restarted it by mid-2007. There was an important proviso. We do not know whether it currently intends to develop nuclear weapons. Defense experts are examining the data to try to understand what advances the North Koreans made with their technology. Shiaki Akimoto heads the Japanese Bureau of the Royal United Services Institute for Defense and Securities. He says there's a clear link between the nuclear and missile programs. Uh, we have no information about the exact size of the device. But if these claims are correct, it could mean North Korea has tested a warhead to be mounted on a ballistic missile. A large nuclear weapons released from planes aren't considered such a big threat because of advances in anti-aircraft weaponry. But ballistic missiles are more difficult to shoot down, so they give nuclear warhead a strategic importance. That's why North Korean scientists are working on two levels, developing ballistic missile technologies and the capability to arm them with a nuclear warhead. Each of the previous nuclear tests in 2006 and 2009 occurred after the launch of a Tepodon-2 ballistic missile. And this time again, the nuclear test comes just two months after missile launch. One of the most difficult aspects of nuclear missile technologies is to develop a warhead that weighs less than one ton. And this makes plutonium a more suitable material because it requires a smaller critical mass. By claiming success in detonating a more compact nuclear device, North Korea's leadership has made it clear it is seeking to develop a warhead for a missile. Uh, given the limited amount of information available about the latest test, it's too early to rule out the possibility of a uranium bomb. As, just, I, as I just explained, plutonium is a better candidate for a compact warhead, but it has several disadvantages. One is the complexity of the trigger to detonate the device. The other one is the reliance on the nuclear reactor from which to ex extract the plutonium, which make a weapons program more difficult to conceal. 
A uranium weapon, on the other hand, requires a more simple detonator, and this material can be enriched underground in more s secretive facilities. As early as the 1990s, North Korean scientists acquired uranium enrichment technologies through Pakistan. Uh, since then, North Korean scientists have attempted to shift their emphasis from plutonium to enriched uranium weaponry. North Korea already has an arsenal of medium-range ballistic missile, the Nodon. Once it develops a compact warhead, it will move significantly closer to being able to deliver nuclear warhead over Japan. And it won't be long before it can mount such a warhead on a missile capable of reaching the United States. In such a situation, North Korea would pose a threat not only to the Northeast Asia, but to the entire Asia-Pacific region. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is going to ask President Barack Obama to permit shale gas exports to Japan. The two leaders will meet on Friday at a summit in Washington. Japan faces a rising energy shortage. Most nuclear plants are halted and utilities are increasingly dependent on thermal power. Abe is eager to import U.S. shale gas as a new cheaper resource. But the Obama administration is limiting its shale gas exports to U.S. free trade partners only. That's to avoid pressure on domestic fuel prices. Non-free trade partners like Japan must go through a government screening on a case-by-case -case basis. I appreciate the tenor of the conversations. Uh, I think it will actually yield results uh, before the end of the year, and I look forward to continuing this dialogue in the months ahead. Thank you very much, everybody.